The Transform It module provides us with the ability to create relational datasets which can be used in conjunction with a relational reporting tool. To access the Transform It module, you simply click the Transform It link. Transform It transformations are organized into transformation spaces. Transformations are held within a transformation space. It's a simple grouping mechanism. What we're going to do is to create a transformation that will result in this particular data set. This data set gives us the ability to analyze sales performance by salesperson within given regions, time and product. We can see the values of order sold and the quantity of products sold. We could use the grouping mechanism within our reporting tool to provide more summarized or detailed analysis. So to create this transformation, the first thing we need to do is to create a transformation space. So we click Add to create a transformation space. We're going to call this transformation space AdventureWorks. Click Save and the transformation space has been created. Having created the AdventureWorks transformation space, we can now start adding dataset output to it. The transformation space detail screen shows us a list of all the datasets that have been created within the transformation space. There are three types of transformation that can be created. A regular, which is like a SQL view, a pivot, similar to an Excel pivot table, and an unpivot that will turn pivot tables back into rows. So our dataset gave us sales analysis. So we need to start with the employee table and base a regular data set on that table. Note that Data Academy has prefixed the output target table with the prefix DS underscore. This identifies that the output table is in fact a data set. This can be overridden. So to edit the details of this data set, we simply click the edit button. The top half of the data set detail screen provides the ability to define the overall functionality of the data set. Across the bottom are listed the output fields. On tabs, we have the ability to join in additional tables and also to apply indexes to the output data set. So the first thing we need to do is to rename the output table. Our salesperson performance data set is going to include the salesperson's name, so we need to add that into the output fields. Add in first name, and since we want the full name of the salesperson, we're going to change the way this field is output. Firstly, we change its target name. Then, since we want to add the first name and the last name, we can use the field function capability to put in some TSQL that will concatenate the first name with the last name. The hash place marker denotes the use of the current source field, in this case, first name. That field is now complete, so we can click Save. Now we need to add some additional details which aren't available in the employee table. So we need to join in some additional tables. To do that, click on the Joins tab and identify the tables that you want to join. The first table we're going to join in is the State Province table. This will give us the geographical information we need. Click Add and Data Academy has found two fields, one in the employee table and one in the State Province table that have the same name. It's therefore assumed that this might be a good place to start for joining. And indeed, that is how the two tables are joined together. We also need to add in the order header, order details and product tables. However, if you've previously joined a table in another dataset, let's say, that join is remembered. And by dropping the join builders list, you can see a list of the tables that have been previously joined and just pick up that join from the other definition. So I add in header, detail and product. Now I can begin to add in the additional fields for the output of this data set. So back to the fields tab and I will note that my list of fields has increased simply because I've added in extra tables. So in order to home down on the particular fields I'm interested in I can use the filter button to filter for just those fields that I'm interested in. So by typing state province into the filter field and hitting the enter key, that will filter the list of the fields to only those that contain the word state province. And indeed, there are my state province fields. What I want is the country code, add that in, and that's got my state province details. 
I want to be able to provide the ability to group by year and by month of any given sale. So I need to add in the month and year of the order date. However, that particular field is not available as an individual field, so I can create it as a calculated field. So I look for the sales order date, which is on the sales order header table. Add that in, and then modify it. So firstly, I want the order year, which is calculated as a TSQL function year. Having entered that into the field function, I can now save. Again, I add the same field in once more, but this time I'm going to calculate the order month. So we modify the field, change the output target field name to order month, and apply the TSQL field function of date name. Note once more the use of the hash place marker to identify the current field. Click save and I've now got my order month included within my field outputs. I now need to know the value of sale and also the products. Since I can add all these fields at once, I'm going to use the multi-add function. I scroll down to find the individual fields that I'm looking for, which are in sales order detail. Line total, order quantity, and also product name. Click add and those three fields will be added into my dataset output. I need to rename the name field to identify that that's in fact product name rather than just name. Having renamed the field, all I need to do now is click Save. What this dataset will currently do is provide me a line for every single order in a given month. Clearly, I'd like this to be grouped, so I'm looking at my totals in which case I need to apply additional functions to my line total and order quantity. So if I start with line total, drill into the field detail, I can use the group function to apply a sum aggregate to that particular field. And the same with order quantity. When this transformation is run, Data Academy will try and assess what the field type needs to be as the output, since I don't need to specify it. When it comes to aggregate up line total, it will identify that this can be aggregated as a money field and will therefore have four decimal places. I want to avoid this on the output, so I can override this by forcing the field type. The way I do this is again, I go in to modify the line total field, and instead of just using the sum aggregate, I then add a cast function to the sum aggregate. While I'm here, I might as well rename the target field to read order value. Having completed this field, again I just save away. My dataset is now ready to be run. I simply save away the current details, go back to the transform it transformation space list screen, and click run. This time I'm dropped into the data services event log and the transformation space is begun building. It's indicated as amber or orange to show me that it's run and it goes green to tell me that it's complete. If I go back to the transformation space list screen again, I can drill into the transformation space and view the output data set. This is exactly what I was expecting. I have all of my analysis capability I need. This transformation is now complete.